Could you tell what I was thinking during that solo? I had something very specific in mind, and we're gonna get to that in a little bit, but first we're gonna back up to the beginning and kind of reverse engineer that solo a little bit. Melody versus licks. Which is better when improvising? Now I know it doesn't have to be this cut and dry. Do you think just melodically when you play or do you think about some memorized and rehearsed licks and edit them when you're playing? And obviously there's a gray area in the middle and you're gonna be using both things probably at some point when you're improvising. But I think to create really good lyrical melodic solos, you should be really focusing on creating melodies when you improvise. Remember, improvising is just composing in real time and composing is just improvising with a pause button. All right, so how do you actually create your own melodies to use when improvising? Well, I actually have a really simple three-step process that I'm gonna show you now. I have it all outlined in a PDF and I'm gonna give that to you completely free so you can have it while I'm going through this video and you can have it going forward to create your own melodies. The only thing you need to do to get that PDF is go to the top of the description down below, click that link and you'll get the PDF emailed right to you. Also, I'll put that link in the pinned comment below as well. I think it's best if you have that PDF up as I dive into it here during this video. You could pause, rewind, do whatever you want, but also you can keep it for future use, like I said. So I'm going to dive into that PDF now. All right. So here you go. You can see I'm inside of the PDF. And just so you know, for this one, I'm going to be using the E flat instruments one because I played alto on this. I'm mainly an alto player, but also I use concert a lot, but so many of you are saxophone players and you've asked that I actually go through it in a saxophone key. So that's why I'm using it. When you click that link and you download the PDFs, you get four options. There's treble clef, concert, bass clef, concert, E flat and B flat. So just make sure you're looking at the correct one for your key and your instrument. I'm gonna be using Blue Bossa for this example. You can use any song you want that you wanna improvise over. To create your own melodies when improvising, step one is to learn the original melody. Whatever the song is, it's really important to learn the melody. I can't tell you how many times people say they know a song and they kind of like, sort of like halfway play the melody and they're like, oh, I got the changes. But then the changes, they're just playing and it has nothing to do with the original melody, which could be fine, but I think it's really important first to learn the original melody, learn why it sounds the way it does. And when you actually look at the original melody and you play through the original melody, take note of the notes that it lands on, take note of where the phrases start, take note of some of the rhythms, the overall phrasing, the amount of notes, all those different things go into what makes this song sound like this song. So now I'm gonna play a recording of myself playing Blue Bossa. <laughs> Many of you probably know this song. This is one of the most quintessential jazz standards and it's one of the ones when you're first starting to improvise, people always point you towards and I think it's a great tune for that. Once you learn the original melody, okay, you, you're able to play through it, ideally you memorized it, but you understand the overall shape of the melody, then what you're gonna do is create your own melody. What? Yeah, step two is you're actually gonna write out your own melody. Remember I said in the beginning, improvising is composing in real time. But then I said, composing is improvising with a pause button. One of the problems when learning to improvise is the chord changes are moving fast and they're going past you and you're like oh, trying to catch up and you're trying to put that lick in that you learned before and create your own melody, compose your own melody. Some people call this a contrafact, but basically what you're doing is you're writing your own new melody over the chord changes to this song. Now, you don't have to write them out the same way the original melody was written. You can, as a guide, take a look at the phrasing and where the motifs are of the original melody, then write your own, but you don't have to. The one thing I'm gonna say is when you do this process, don't write out a solo. What's the difference? Well, think about the elements of melody from the original song. Even think about this song. That's the phrase. Ah, it's a motif now, it's repeated. Repeat it again at the beginning, then it changes. Da 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 da. Then the last line is its own kind of motif twice. Da 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 da. Right. So melodically, it has certain elements that are not necessarily solo. 
right? It just has a long lyrical line with a resolution, four bars. Long lyrical line with a resolution, four bars. That kind of repeats. The melody kind of repeats. It's just a step down. The rhythms kind of repeat. The overall shape of the line repeats. Repetition is something super important in melody. So now if you scroll down in the PDF, you'll see that I wrote out my own melody to Blue Bossa. Now I tried to create some motifs and some rhythms and you'll even notice when they're stacked on top of each other like this, like measure one, measure five, measure two, measure six, measure three, seven, four, eight. They're kind of roughly the same and you'll hear that now as I play my melody for you. All right, so what did I think of when playing this melody? I'm gonna do a quick analysis of it for you. So I started on the third of the A minor chord here. I love thirds, whether it's a major chord, minor chord, whatever. Third is a very strong, very stable chord tone, and I love landing on that and starting on it and everything. So I basically started on that quarter note, two eighths, and I played all this syncopation. Look, upbeat, 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 right, for two bars. And then look at the rhythm here. One, two, and. And look at the rhythm in the first measure. One, two, and. So it's one, two, and, 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 one, two, and, and, and. All right, those are all upbeats as well. Then I end the phrase there. And you notice I also hit the third here of that D minor chord. Then the second line, look, I start on the third again, and look at the rhythms. One, two, and, 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 one, two, and, 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 and. So I just, add an extra upbeat here at the end. Harmonically, I'm not gonna get into it too much, but the first line here, I just stay kind of diatonic here in the my A minor or C major. Second line, I kind of start out like I'm gonna play a harmonic minor, but because this is a sharp nine, I play G natural here versus G sharp. But like I said, I'm not gonna get too much into the harmony. I'm really thinking more about the rhythms, the articulation, the overall shape of these lines. Then here, I'm staying in the key of B flat major, but I add this little flat nine here. One, two, three, and, 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 and. Once again, look at the rhythms. Instead of one, two, and, I put a rest on beat one, displace it by a quarter note, and then I still do the same thing, quarter, the eighth, eighth, then uppy, 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 right? I just do this going into beat four. I just felt like landing on beat four there. Then look at the last line, same rhythms as up here. These three bars are the exact same rhythms as these three bars but I once again use notes that fit into the chords. And here is that G sharp because it's E7 flat nine versus sharp nine this time. When writing out your own melody, once again, really think about overall melody. It doesn't have to be as noty as mine. Some of the greatest melodies that have ever been written in jazz standards are like whole notes. Think about all the things you are. It's just basically whole notes on the third of each chord going through all the chords. You know, you can have something like Autumn Leaves where it kind of leads into a whole note each time. Right? You don't have to make it a line. Don't think about writing out like a bebop melody. Okay? You can. Sure, I'm not going to tell you exactly what to do. But think more lyrical. Literally, think if you wrote words to this song, what would they sound like? Okay? Now, did you notice something when I played my melody? Hmm. Interesting. Well, the third part to my three-step process here of playing melodic solos and creating your own melodies is you're now going to improvise over these chord changes, but you're going to improvise based off of the melody that you wrote. Why is this important and why am I being very clear with this? Well, you could make an improvised solo based off the original melody, that's fine, but that's the original melody that everybody has. You can also just improvise off the chord changes and play licks and play randomly, that's fine, but that's where people get stuck. By taking the time to write out your own melody, to compose your own melody, you're creating something that you're feeling, that you're hearing, but you're taking the time to write it down. Then when you improvise, you now have kind of a roadmap. You have a framework of your melody to base your solo on. The thing is you can start there and then go away from it, but still keep it in the back of your mind. And because you wrote out the melody, it's not gonna be like the original melody, so it's going to just sound like an improvised solo from the beginning, even though you know you're basing your solo off of something. In the very beginning, when I played my solo, and then afterwards I said, 
Could you tell what I was thinking of specifically? Right now, I'm gonna play that same recording back and especially for the first chorus, I want you to look at my melody while listening and see if you notice something. Pretty interesting, huh? Now that you've heard me play my melody, I've gone through it and you're looking at it, when listening to that solo now, I'm sure you can hear and hopefully you can tell that I based my solo, specifically the first chorus, off of the melody that I wrote. When you first heard it though, you probably didn't know that I was doing that. And I purposely kind of left it more vague because I wanted you to understand that when you actually then go to improvise after doing, doing this three step process, Nobody's going to know that you took the time to write your own melody, then base your solo off that melody because you created it. It's still improvised. Even though you wrote out that melody and you composed it, because you're basing your improvised solo off of your improvised composition, just happened to be with a pause button, you're creating your own melodic solos. So if you look on the next page of the PDF, for this song specifically, I actually gave you the chord changes with blank staff paper here so you can write out your own. But obviously, if you're working on other songs, you can do this with them as well. Just take some blank staff paper, write out the chord changes above, look at the original melody as a reference, write out your own melody, then improvise based off your own composition. I highly recommend going through this three step process and really being strict to it. Learn the original melody, write your own melody, and then create an improvised solo in real time based off of your written melody. From there, because you have that framework, like I said, then you can go off and add all the things that you want to it. But if you're always referencing that melody that you know works because you took the time to write it out, you're still going to be improvising. You're not playing a written solo, but you're basing it off of something that definitely works and you know is going to sound good and sound the way you want. And it will definitely be melodic because <laughs> you're basing it off of a melody. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you made it this far, thanks so much for watching and I wanna thank you very much for your support for this video and all of my videos as well. Don't forget to pick up this PDF completely free in the description and the pinned comments below. If you wanna see me do any other specific topics related to saxophone, jazz, improvisation, or anything else, please let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.